So you just brought up Duke Johnson, Big Co. It's a good transition in. Let's let's cover this guy here. He's uh not yeah. not covering not doing much for you right now. Same situation as Chubb, except for he we he is supposed to be the third down pass catching back and he's right. getting nothing. What'd you call him off air? He said he's the 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 most talented, least utilized player in the NFL right now. Yeah, yeah. It, well, Exactly. Duke Johnson might be the best player not getting used by his team in the NFL right now. And I can't think of anybody better that's not getting any action. Right. And every time he's touched it, it's looked awesome. He's had a, he had a huge no first down pickup in this in this last Browns game that helped them out. It was he had a he had a spin move that everyone was like, "What was that spin move about?" <laughs> but he ended up he crept along the sideline, caught, caught the ball, got the first down, kept the chains moving. When and the, the crazy thing is, is like Duke Johnson's like I know the snap aren't the be all end all but he's getting on the field he's he's not not on the field he's right. getting out there he's well, not you, not on the field he's, he was on the field what about 70 percent of the same type of 70 percent of snaps that Hyde was but Hyde got 26 I think, touches and I think or 28 the, touches and he got four I think the total for the year is something around 135 to 96 or something like that for Chubb to yeah or for uh Hyde to Right Duke about seventy percent. I have just some quick math in my head, but yeah, that's Duke Johnson. So like he's it. out on the field, and obviously you just lost Josh Gordon, and maybe there that's a, maybe there's a little bit of opportunity opening up for Duke. You just paid this. It's kind of strange that you paid this guy. I know Jason's a big follow the, follow money. the money kind of guy. I don't necessarily subscribe to that notion, but. Uh, well, so you're, not, you're not blindly following money. You're following a guy who's got the most catches out of a running right. back since who's he entered the league. Who's an RB1 last year. He, he's, he's got the most catches since he entered the league. Obviously, another year, and, and Christian McCaffrey will blow right past him. But two two catches for 24 yards last week and two carries. And the and less la, the week, you know, three carries a week before that. It's, he's been trending down. He got five carries week one. He's right. been going down ever since. So, I mean, and a lot of people were saying coming into this season that Todd Haley as an OC has historically been a one back kind of guy. And it's working out like that. So it certainly is. Basically, there is no selling Duke Johnson. Absolutely um, not. If you have Duke Johnson. Couldn't even sell him in the offseason before any of this happened. You couldn't sell him while he was still considered good. <laughs> right. So basically, Duke Johnson has to be a buy because I don't know what he could cost you. This is a next year be much. A next year buy. You but in the but the biggest problem is because bef- right before he got that extension, it was like, look, where everybody was looking for the next Jarek McKinnon. And you you know you people were shopping out there that it could be T.J. Yeldon out of Jacksonville that would go out of there and he could potentially be a three down back for somebody. Duke Johnson could go be a three down back for somebody because he. But then he gets the extension and you're like, okay, well at least he's going to be getting sixty catches a year. He's on pace for ten. Right. You know what I mean? More than that, but thirty. Thirty's a big drop down from seventy. Sure. And a back end RB one last year to somebody that's not even flex worthy now is right. just a terrible turn for Duke Johnson. Terrible turn. So you got to be able to in a short bench league. I don't know how you can buy him because he's going to clog you. Yeah. And because of the way they've handled the Carlos Hyde situation, if Carlos Hyde was to go down, you don't know if Nick Chubb comes in there and grabs that. Well, right. And then moving on to next season, it's the I, I, that's essentially what I would be going after to buy Duke Johnson for because I do believe he's a really good player and maybe they end up trading him or something in the off season, something along those lines. But like, are you buying, are you, you thinking even if Carlos leaves, does Chubb just slide right in and then Duke's just put on the back burner again because of the, you know, Todd Haley is a guy who has typically used one, one back in a system and, and you're seeing that right now. And maybe this just carries right over to the Nick Chubb era. So those are, that's just, those are great points about Todd Haley and, and how he used Le'Veon Bell. Obviously, Le'Veon Bell was the man. Yeah. Um, why wouldn't you use him all the time? I, I don't know. I don't think that Chubb is quite the receiver that Hyde is. Not that Hyde's getting a ton of receiving work. None of these running backs are catching a bunch of balls in this offense for right, whatever you got, you reason. You already got Jarvis already catching all right, and your he, running back time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, although, his ADOT, although his ADOT is increasing. Um, I... I'd be down to go buy Duke Johnson. I'll say this in his defense. I can't find it anywhere on Roto World or on like other websites to give you injury information. But I remember in watching Hard Knocks that Todd Haley was upset with like Hugh Jackson because Duke Johnson wasn't practicing because he was dealing with some sort of injury. I want to say it was like a hamstring or something. But they were holding him out of practice in the in the in training camp, and so maybe he's dealing with something that we not really don't 
know 100% about. Maybe that's why they're scaling back his usage a little bit. I don't... There's no reason why he shouldn't. He's on the field. Why wouldn't they be targeting him? I just I, I don't, don't get it. It's a, so, it's a strange situation. So well, it hasn't been a pass heavy team yet. This is true. And 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 really, before ba- we it's don't been pretty conservative. We don't know where Baker takes this play team. defense. Don't turn it over. We don't know where Baker takes this team. And somehow, some way, with the one win in two years, the coaching staff, the head coach stayed in place, and they changed coordinators. It's been a very leadership. A turnover field situation player turnover like it's been all over the place so now that you got if baker comes in and writes this ship and everybody keeps their job and todd haley stays yes it's we don't if it's a one-back system and carlos hides there is hide we don't know if 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 nick chubb jumps in there we don't know if duke John, if if carlos hide goes down maybe it's duke johnson that comes in here and just tears it up for 10 weeks if he can stay healthy you know so if if the coaches stick around we don't really know how it's going to go but it looks like todd haley wants to use one back so, like he has been and that's the way it's working out so by by duke johnson or just kind of just kind of let I'm, him be i'm a believer in the talent and, and that's I've what you're buying him because you believe in the talent right and most likely probably hoping that something changes next year or by week 10 or you're, yeah, right. you're buying him because you know he can play slot you know he can catch anything that gets near him and every time he's ever taken a handoff i thought he thought he looks really really good sure they do have a good offensive line and most of these handoffs have come with tyrod out there and it's not been many but even last year before tyrod got there and, and just you know terrible situations dukes always look good so Somebody I, would be dying for you to send him a two and smash the accept button for Duke Johnson. You wouldn't have to. That's too much. Right. It's crazy. But that's, that's what that's I'm saying. Thing. Like somebody would be just I'd smashing that thing. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. You, I, I mean, if I'd, I'd give up a two to get Duke Johnson, I'll be getting a three back, maybe even a four. I'll give you a two. You give me a Duke and three and a four. Or I'd be offering you a three for Duke, and you say no. I'll give you a three and a four for Duke, something like that. I mean, I just, just what are you going to do with him? He's killing your roster right now, and some people, people myself included, get so Impaciente. interested. What, what impatient? Very impatient. What can you do for my team right now? Yeah. And Duke ain't going to do nothing but kill a roster spot until further notice. Yeah, I think we should make Duke great again. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he All can right. be huge. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the Cleveland Browns running back situation. And we'll maybe shoot over to David Njoku, another uh, fan favorite.